Hey everybody, this is another session of our series called Alive and Kicking. It's specialized in the food and beverage industry here in Vietnam, uh, talking about all things F&B, what's the future, what's happening now. We're super happy to invite Joshua Breidenbach. Am I saying that right? It's Breidenbach. Breidenbach. <laughs> um, he's from the US. He's lived in Vietnam for 10, 15 years? Roughly. Like. Roughly. Yeah. He's been in Vietnam for some time. and. Started in advertising, went on to start uh, a creative agency consultancy called Rice. Mm -hmm. uh, they've done amazing stuff here, everything from Pizza for Peas, the most recent rebranding, um, Maru Chocolate, Rooster Beers, Bayman, uh, the Uber Moto Helmet before uh, they exit in the market, among other things. Um, so we're really pleased to have Josh here on the show today. He's uh, a partner and co-founder of Rice. Uh, so welcome to the show, Josh. Thanks, Hal. Happy to be here. Great, and Thanks for asking. you know, before um, we kind of jump into today's chat, we'd love to hear from you, like, you know, who you are, what you're doing here, and what is Rice exactly? Okay. Um, well, like you mentioned, I've been here for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I came here in 2006 to get involved in creativity here in Vietnam. Um, it was a chance for a young designer to come somewhere really challenging uh, completely out of my comfort zone and to try to learn something, to try to uh, contribute something potentially uh, in creativity or just just observe, just see this incredible place blossom. Mm. Uh, it's been an incredible journey. Um, starting working in advertising, you know, I was really involved in sort of uh, bigger campaigns mm -hmm. for huge clients like Unilever. Um, and that was... Uh, really interesting um i noticed uh along the way that i was kind of like maybe missing a little bit of you know that sort of fulfillment that kind of like reason i came here mm -hmm. doing that work uh and i kind of built an uh, allegiance with um another young designer gian DeLeo, uh, who was working with me at that agency at the time and you were both designers graphic designers copywriters I, we were technically art directors art at that directors. point okay so we were um masterminding sort of these big 360 campaigns mm -hmm. for these big clients and you know trying to also uh, create work that was meaningful mm. um, you know we, we were really interested in this idea of uh, getting these big budgets to go towards uh, things that would you know raise the bar um, in terms of like what was seen out there and also maybe do some good in the community mm -hmm. uh, so that was kind of our personal vendetta at the advertising agency and we took all of that mm, kind of power behind us, that sort of drive, and we, we built uh, our own agency, uh, which is called Rice today. That was in 2011. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we really became interested in was uh, going a little bit back into my training. I was trained in graphic design, brand design. Um, I worked for a spell at Landor Associates, which is a, a bigger branding agency. They have offices all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot there, and I really loved how foundational branding is. You're working with business owners. You're understanding from them what is important. Why are they doing what they're doing in the first place? Like down to the foundation, the very core of it, mm -hmm. and trying to build something that they can use to tell the world. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I love that. It's pre-advertising. And what we do today is also you know, that sort of core foundational work. Great. Um, so you guys are strategists, consultants, not just designers. That's it's right. It's a whole integrated experience, this yeah. whole idea of branding. And that's what we want to talk about today, too, kind of what you guys have done on the food and beverage side specifically, right. which I know you guys cover everything from financial services to products and experiences, but a lot of tech now, a lot of tech as well. Um, F and B, uh, I guess you have one uh, client or maybe potentially a lot, uh, many of them that cover both. Um, That's so right. I'd love to hear today though, uh, to focus on the whole F and B element. So okay. I mentioned earlier, Bayman, pizza for peas, yeah. Maru chocolate, rooster beers. In your opinion, what defines all these kind of iconic food and beverage brands? You know, they touch consumers mm -hmm. at so many different levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, they create joy for a lot of them, yeah. happiness. Um, what are some of the recurring features and characteristics that you see that make them so iconic uh, in an F and B sense? It's it's all about the founders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think my team does an incredible job of building strategies, um, getting to the core, 
of what is driving a founder to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, but if it weren't for those people, you know, our work is meaningless. Mm -hmm. It's nominal. Um, these are people, you know, Pizza Four Ps, Maru, any of them. These are people that are super driven. I mean, it's there's so much sweat mm -hmm. there. Um, I think that's easy to overlook once a brand is built, mm -hmm. once a brand takes root, once a brand starts to you know blossom. It's it. These people almost make it look easy. Mm -hmm. um, I think with the help of a good um, brand, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things branding do to sort of like accelerate or um, accentuate the power of what these people are trying to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's all about the founders. It's all about, you know, what has them wake up every morning and do the same thing, you know, or do millions of things centered around one core value, one mission, you know, mm -hmm. all of those things. It's, it's all about the founders and what we did with Rice um, for our own brand is to seek out um, these projects that are fronted by people who want to make a difference, want to make people smile, want to change something for the better. And you guys have been, have been really lucky and, and fortunate to yeah. match up with so many of these. You know, I think been. matchmaking is, is one of the most challenging things in the whole yeah. agency world. How do you identify the value of your kind of team with, with another? And you've been able to do that to this time, to this day. Yeah. I mean, share with us kind of, um, why do you think like these brands have been kind of attracted to work with rice too? kind of what, what do you think, you know, you talk about the founders and I think that's great. Yeah. Um, how about on the other side, how are, why are they coming to rice? I, I think that's very simple. I mean, my mind sort of fragments into all sorts of potential answers there, but I think it's really about aligning our personal values. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, from day one, we built a company uh, to be a place where we want to work mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um, anything that we could have foreseeably uh, complained about in previous work life situations, we corrected with the way we built Rice. Mm -hmm. so, you know, anytime a brief comes over the table, I want to do it myself. Oh my God, I want to do this so bad. And I give that to a team of young designers who I believe feel the same. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really, really important work. We have quite a, quite a narrow window, I guess, of like the kind of um, uh, projects we engage with. Mm -hmm. um, and it, 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 it's just about, you know, everyone wants to mm, make make something better mm -hmm. everyone and, yeah, yeah and, and when you say narrow window um not that that's not only the type of brand or company you want to work with mm -hmm. what about stage you know you guys have worked with really big monster companies yeah. like uber right but you've also started with brands that don't even exist yet right what why do you work with you know those two different very different uh, ends of the spectrum and kind of what's your favorite or maybe positives from, from oh both? wow it's always kind of the same thing mm -hmm. Surprisingly, um, you know, I think Uber is a company that uh, want to make certain aspects of life easier or better. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that we can uh, leap off of to help them do that in a meaningful way here in Vietnam. So when that brief came across the table, it was simply um, we just want to have everyone out there understand that these are Uber drivers, like mm -hmm. clearly see them. Um, that's a pretty straightforward brief. We took that a lot further. Um, we made that about uh, re-engineering the things that the rider would wear to make that experience better for the rider, safer. We, we basically invented a new kind of jacket as if it's like some kind of sportswear. And people are still collecting them. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys still have some yourself? I have a little stock. Yeah, yeah. got it. Um, so it became, you know, not just about visibility. We took we took this brief of visibility into, um, you know, more more iconic in terms of um, shape. Mm -hmm. You know, not just like color or logo, but like shape, form. Um, you know, I wanted. I, I thought of myself as a rider. I wanted to see that driver as somebody who was well protected, who was a professional, um, not just kind of like 
say I'm driver, you know, 2.0, but mm -hmm. like really like equipped to do his job well. And in turn, I mean, that meant visibility. They looked so different. Mm -hmm. um, so it really was like kind of a win-win where we felt we were improving safety for riders and drivers. I mean, in terms of like reflectiveness, mm -hmm. everything. Um, and that just became um, something that linked back to what the Uber brand is about, mm -hmm. which is about you know evolving and making things better. So you guys are you know building on to this existing brand in this case. Yeah. What about these ones that you just started from scratch? Yeah. You know, we can start with Maru potentially. Yeah. Let's say, you know, uh, I heard back in the day they literally had nothing other than just going to a bunch of chocolate farms and yep. cacao farms and deciding they wanted to get into this. How, how did you get into that discussion and what were the lessons you learned as, as the designer, the brand thinker about that project, about how to make a long lasting yeah. F&B brand? We learned a lot there. That was literally our first project. Mm -hmm. So that was in two, two, that was basically in 2011, mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, somehow it was right when we had left our previous mm -hmm. job and started Rice. And, through the grapevine, they heard mm -hmm. about us. These mm -hmm. two guys who were on a mission to do great branding mm -hmm. that is about like meaningful, you know, mm -hmm. making change, all of these things. So they approached you with they that context in mind. They had that context okay. in mind and they were like, that's us, but mm -hmm. through product, mm -hmm. through chocolate. Uh, so we went over to Samuel Maruta's house. He and Vincent Maru were mixing chocolate mm -hmm. um, in Sam's kitchen. And they told us, guys, we've been on a journey. We've been to like all of these cacao farms all over southern Vietnam. We're getting the same species of cacao, but it tastes different from farm to farm. And we want to tell the world about that. Mm -hmm. Like that's just incredible. That's mm -hmm. exactly what we want mm -hmm. to do. Is you know we already had this conversation amongst us about you know if we could get this product in somebody's hands in uh, across the world, that person might be, I don't know, really surprised and really enthusiastic about a product mm -hmm. that came out of Vietnam. Rather than this, you know, when, when you're lucky enough to live in this place, you understand how great it is, how, how much opportunity and potential there is here. But if you're, you know, on the other side of the earth and you've only seen films or, you know, not done enough research, you might have a misconception of a place. Mm -hmm. And we believe that through branding and even just through product, simple one little chocolate bar you can infiltrate that mm -hmm. misconception mm -hmm. and change people's minds and like open up their curiosity um and how, how did that experience inform your your future projects because you went on to do you know, these bigger bigger budget projects bigger brands uh -huh. um brands that were just started uh what were some of the lessons you learned from those initial projects to what is rice today and how they approach branding you say um well, I guess mistakes too, not just uh, oh, tons of mistakes. I, I mean, I think nothing really ever changed. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's always that same sort of um, drive to just see. It's like what can what can we do here? Mm -hmm. Like obviously, we can help these people um, simplify and, and, and codify and uh, sort of get their message across to their audience. Mm -hmm. We can always do that very, very well. We're, we're very versed in bringing those things to life. But it's, it's always more. Rice is always more. It's like, what can we do here? The brief never gets br on, br brought into the studio and just made into what it said. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it blossoms. It, it becomes more about, um, you know, what are other opportunities we can discover for these people? Mm -hmm. um, how can we make their business stronger? How can we make their business more loved? You know, we talk about this thing like brand love. We want people to love that brand. Mm -hmm. So we have to love it, first of all. Mm -hmm. We find something we love about it, and we can bring that into uh, something that, you know, the world can sort of rally around. I think, you know, we're, we're all kind of like, very very positive people like you know there's some, there's a lot of issues today there's always been lots of issues but um we're seeking to confront issues through our work and, you know you can depending on who the client is 
it can be, you know, take Pizza for Peace, for example, where their whole thing is making the world smile for peace. Us working with Pizza for Peace was like we were the same company, mm -hmm. you know. They they came to us because they actually pushed us a lot of times. And it was amazing. Um, if it's a, a big kind of established company like an Uber or something, you know, it may be more of an internal effort. Like, all right, we're all we're we're going to do this beautiful design. It's gonna it's gonna be amazing. Don't worry about it. But at the same time, we're gonna make the lives of the people involved a little bit nicer. Mm -hmm. And then you know, you bring that back to the client and say, we're doing this, but it's gonna make people love you more. You know, it, it just depends on how, how we do that. But it's always sort of our mission to, um, yeah, just get that story across and, 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 and to actually make, make some sort of um, mm -hmm. positive change beyond design. I'm, I'm very, um, I'm not very, very interested in what people talk about design, mm -hmm. you know, the surface of yeah. things. You can only have good design, I believe, if, if you start with there's a lot of work before the design actually is actually done the identity the yeah. vision the mission the goals kind of the verbal kind yeah. of explanation of the whole thing and yeah that leads on to my next question okay. um I kind of i'm trailing with with all these different stages of when a business is built and or being built um what kind of stage is interesting to you guys like is it at the very beginning when somebody just has an idea they're like oh you know about to assign this lease and I have this idea of something, here's uh -huh. my idea, right? Or is it kind of in the middle of the whole thing? Is it at the end when the, the brand is built and they're, they're evolving and they're um, expanding? Yeah. Where do you guys kind of come in in that whole stage, um, those stages? I mean, it's great if we can come in at the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the work that we do is foundational with business owners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's sit around and figure this thing out. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone that's starting a company or running a business has a million and one things to do. Um, building the brand is probably not one of them. Uh, that's why we exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, bring us in as a partner. We'll do that mm -hmm. together with you. So you don't have to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, working with different scale is always really, really interesting. You know, we may have somebody come across and say, I have an incredible idea. I've got a little bit of funding. You know, I think that's, uh, I think it's gonna do this. I, I have this vision. You know, we can partner with that um, person or people and, 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 and help bring that to life mm -hmm. and hopefully set it in the right direction towards that vision. Yeah. You know, we can clarify that. And, but also if you work with someone that is um, doing something really at scale, that's also really, really, interesting too because you, you can make more things happen mm -hmm. um, you know what one, one of my favorite examples from our past is a big brand we worked with called UNICEF mm -hmm. and, you know obviously um, it's not a, a corporation uh, but it's a, a it's a massive massive organization and through a project we did with them we were able to make a big difference um, there are other organizations that do similar work as UNICEF um, but they might, they may have a harder time, you know, doing those things. And, you know, we would happily help both or get involved to, to, um, focus the, the ambitions of both. Mm -hmm. But when you do something with UNICEF, it's like, bam, we've just affected, uh, you know, a whole community mm -hmm. like, in a big way. Yep. So doing things at scale, I think can be really, really interesting. Okay. Um, the Uber thing was super cool when Uber, um, was acquired, um, the drivers uh, that were having to give up their Uber jackets and helmets that they loved, they had like rallies. They like, mm -hmm. they grouped together and drove to Wundau together. It was mm -hmm. like, that didn't, that doesn't happen with some of the other, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that was really like, Profound. Sometimes you know? branches die and are forgotten, and but this one was timeless in a way and remains so, even though it doesn't actually exist in this market at least. We had made an impact mm. in some way um, with Uber in in these people's lives, mm -hmm. and it's like thousands of people. And it, it, it's you know I kind of got into design and branding because um, even though I'm quite a uh, reserved person, I like the idea of communicating with 
thousands of people, millions of people. And, you know, there's, uh, with branding, you can do that. And I think that also um, holds a lot of responsibility. And I like that pressure of that responsibility. Like, I better get this right because there's going to be like a million people out there that are going to see this mm -hmm. or more than that. And uh, especially, you know, being a guest here in Vietnam, I feel that responsibility to uh, work with a local team, obviously, to make sure I know what I'm talking about, but to help get the message across in, in a relevant and, and, and appropriate way. It, it, there's a lot of this responsibility that I feel as a person running rice. Um, we have to get it right. We have to do it really, really well. And that's why, like, sometimes, you know, it takes a little bit longer or um, it's, it's all about getting it right the first time um, and then iterating, of course. But I believe in that instead of sort of, like, shooting these things out there and, mm -hmm. and, and it's sort of uh, maybe not sending the right message. So, okay. I don't know if I even answered your question. Yeah, no, <laughs> it was very insightful and... Um, you know, branding is an area that I, I've always discounted and not really thought a lot about as a business owner. Sure. It's like we think about the operations more. At least sure. I'm a more operations focused person. But as as my business has grown and uh, ones I've been involved with, uh, the, the importance of strategic thinking, um, yeah. insight dri driven kind of uh, implementation is becoming more and more critical. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we're, we're working on a project right now yeah. and, and, and you, you probably know about it. Um, and we look at all the steps we've taken and, and working on the branding side has been essential for that definition of that, that mission. Oh, that's great. Cool. Yeah, um, it is. And we, we absolutely understand mm -hmm. the, uh, our, our situation. Um, we always have to explain ourselves mm -hmm. and we always will. Yeah. And that, that you know, that make, makes, gets me thinking, like, how integrated are your, your guys' thinking? Because, you know, fundamentally you focus on, uh, you know, branding and design and production. You guys do a lot of packaging, yeah. for instance. Do you guys get involved with, like, verbal identity or even interior design? Are those areas that you guys are exploring yeah, absolutely. or doing yeah. at the moment? We have an um, architect on board. We mm -hmm. have a really robust production team. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to design... I know, I, earlier I kind of discounted design but when it comes to design we're super tenacious mm -hmm. it has to be made the way it's meant to be made mm -hmm. um, we very rarely just pass files off and okay good luck it's like I mean that, that started back with Maru we made sure that those wrappers were printed a certain way and mm -hmm. like all the details were perfect the right paper blah 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 that's all really important to design and experience and how somebody interacts with something uh, so we see all of that through to the end. Uh, we definitely do that now with architecture and interior. Have you guys launched any projects yet with your that side of the business, or, or are those pending? Oh, um, that started with Maison Maru, so that okay. was years back now. Mm -mm -mm. The first one, mm -hmm. Calmet. Um, we were involved in the one in Hanoi, and we've recently finished one in Taunian. Okay. Um, and that project was done with our new architect, Aprar. Mm -hmm. And she did an amazing job. So mm -hmm. what happens there is, uh, though you know she is an architect, um, we're focusing more on like the interior branding, and you know there's sort of a line there where we would probably have other architects on the project uh, doing the more robust architectural Technical stuff. Yeah, yeah uh, but they will be looking at the concept that we built with the client. Mm -hmm. So it's like us and the client, mm -hmm. we own this. Uh, concept together we we champion this concept therefore that's the brief then to the architects um, or that's a really nice way for that to go and you know if you have um, a really good architect on board they'll look at that and say okay cool I got it internalize that and it'll somehow influence their work mm. um, and then having our own architect on board we can have that conversation very smoothly you know we can then we're talking about technical drawings and you know how this beam interacts with the you know it starts to get very technical and, mm -hmm. and then of course the material selection and you know uh, lighting and all of those things are part of a brand so i think you know what you mentioned earlier is your fo focus is on operation well that is the brand and we're you know complementing that mm -hmm. or we may even have some conversation with you about how we can make that uh, operation experience even better and then reflect your 
your brand more, mm -hmm. your values, your, what you're all about, what you're trying to do. Uh, have you guys thought about, you know, I I investing in some more projects that you guys potentially own and operate or, or are a part of? Sure. Is that, is that in the the plan for, for Rice? Sure. Uh, I mean, that's been, uh, we've been part of thing. We're involved in things in that way already. Mm -hmm. uh, we have concepts uh, that we would like to bring to life. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we will. We're in no rush. Mm -hmm. uh, I think th the core of our business is the studio, and we're making that better and better all the time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, you could blame 2020 for slowing some things down here and there. Uh, we do have a couple concepts that we would like to get off the ground in the near future. And, you know, it's, I think it's an interesting thing because, like I said earlier, with the studio, it's all about working with these founders and working with these people that have a vision that we help bring to life. Um, when, the, when those founders are us, um, we have to make sure that the studio is robust and working on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, our plan is to bring more strength in more, more people that want to join us, that believe in what we're doing. And, you know, maybe in the future we will be able to find that space to be founders of more of our own projects. But we do, we're already very personally vested in to a lot of every our project. clients' projects. Of course. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes uh, we, we become, you know, veritable partners in different degrees. Mm -hmm. So it's all kind of happening mm -hmm. uh, in its own way. Yeah. It's good to be partners with your clients if it's just a supplier-client relationship that yeah. will never get to the full potential. And I think... Yeah. Um, that's, that's what I wanted to touch upon today, too, because a lot of um, new business owners, a lot of brands, you know, uh, especially the ones maybe running a tighter ship, yeah. um, they don't see branding or strategy as something critical to the business. Right. Um, but if brought to the table in a partner capacity, you could actually really make a difference. So that's right. That was something that I wanted to touch upon. Yeah, and that's something we did very early on, mm -hmm. in fact, um, you know, when it was just Gian and I, we kind of had to make sure we could live. Um, as you build a studio, um, you have to take care of people. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's utmost priority. Like I said, yeah, you, you guys are feeding the you know the team of thirty people now, twenty five yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. So yeah, it's a lot. Um, first and foremost, you know, taking care of the team, taking care of your partners, and yeah. making things robust. Yeah. Um, However, if, if you can, you know, get involved with a client mm -hmm. as, as a partner, I think mm -hmm. that's a really healthy relationship that mm -hmm. I would advise, you know, any studio to do. Mm -hmm. um, for better or worse, uh, clients don't always budget for um, branding. And mm -hmm. branding takes a pretty big group of people mm -hmm. at times, which is a cost. There's yeah. an overhead cost. Of course. Can't escape it. Yeah. Never get free branding. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Somebody's suffering or you're going to get terrible mm -hmm. work you know yep. it's just it doesn't work like that um so you know sometimes this partnership thing works but mm -hmm. it, it definitely has to be um something that everyone really really believes in mm -hmm. like i mentioned earlier there's so much sweat involved mm -hmm. in you know any successful business out there you know it's been a lot of work it doesn't it, it can't just happen um, that's something we've learned over the years for sure well, excellent. Um, Josh, I think that kind of wraps up our, our session today. Right. Um, we want to keep it nice and tidy today. Thank Great. you so much. Uh, if you want to hear more from Josh, he'll be at our Vietnam Food and Beverage Conference oh, yeah. on November 5th. Yeah. Um, so he'll be sharing more insights then. I believe your session's about building loved brands. So you'll be speaking more in depth about some of the projects Rice and yourself have worked on. Um, if you can't wait until then, you know, definitely check out some of their products and brands that they helped support over the years. Uh, I've mentioned a few earlier in the session today, like uh, Maru, Rooster Beers, Pizza for Peas, and many, many others, I'm sure. Um, so thank you again, Josh, for showing up on the show today of Alive and Kicking. It's a series uh, introducing and updating the, the market about what's going on in F&B in Vietnam with a special zoom in today without branding and identity and strategy. Um, any other last words, Josh, from you? No, I mean, I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, uh, if you do look us up right now, we're going through a little rebranding process ourselves. Our website is not up. Um, uh, if you're curious about more, you know, please reach out. Um, somebody will always get back to you. And, uh, you yeah, know, excellent. Here to help. Yeah. And if you need to find them, uh, their office is at Sun Tech Tower. Uh, they're here in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, thanks again, Josh.
Thanks, Al.